It's about uh, spirituality in public policies in Quebec related to education. I will talk about this word spirituality in public policies. So after uh, 2000, when uh, the Minister of Education decided to secularize the school system, because before it was Protestant and Catholic, mainly the public uh, uh, school system, and after he decided to secularize the education itself, the, you know, the, the curriculum, only in 2008, because before it was optional b between moral, secular, moral, or uh, Christianity, Catholicism and Protestantism. Uh, at the same time, the word appeared. Uh, so it's my third point. In the Public Education Act, they changed the law, and that's what they wrote. They assigned the public schools their responsibility to facilitate the spiritual development of students so as to promote self-fulfillment. So I was wondering what it meant. So I looked a little bit more in a few documents. I did a research, a field work research during the years 2000. And I'll show you a few results. A lot of countries dream, like Anna and uh, Catherine uh, seem, uh, seems to, they are dreaming of a, a common program and common spirituality goal in schools that would recognize pluralism. So we'll, we'll see what happened with this spirituality word. So because of pluralism, individualization of a religion, uh, as you may know, and it's, uh, Quebec is not the only place, it's the same in the rest of Canada, it's the same in the United States and elsewhere in the world, public pastoral ministries have replaced their appellation with spiritual services. So it happened also in our schools after the secularization of the system. So before 2000, we had, uh, pastoral, we had pastoral ministry in schools. And after, they create a new, a new profession called Spiritual Care and Guidance and Community Involvement Service, addressed to the various groups of religious and non-religious students. So, and denominational chaplaincies are, were no longer permitted. In short, I think that in Quebec, we have a kind of mixed world vision in relation to religious pluralism. We were quite influenced by the British model. Fernand Ouellet, who worked for years in Quebec on, on this common religious culture program, was very influenced by Bob Jackson and pleaded for a spiritual vision of, uh, you know, of uh, the, the child and the adolescent at school. But the, the, the tricky thing in Quebec is that we have this British influence and this Republican reality, <laughs> the French one. So this mix is very tricky. It means that we had good intentions, but it didn't work that well. I, I started with the, the Supreme Court Amsalan uh, case in 2004 where uh, they defined religion as a subjective uh, reality because the, the court did not want to enter into religious doctrine. So that's what they, they, uh, they wrote. Uh, so I, I tried to see how they see, they saw spirituality. They used their religious vocabulary, but they, they are talking about individuals' spiritual faith. And then, you know, they have very general definition, uh, spiritual fulfillment, uh, individuals to foster a connection with the divine or with the subject or object of that spiritual faith. They try to stay very general and universal, I would say. So that, that's what they, they, um, they traced as a definition. The Proulx report was the major piece in 1999 where uh, the, the reform was uh, designed uh, for our school system. So look what they say about spirituality. The task force fully 
acknowledge the spiritual dimension of human experience, but also acknowledges that different people within our society have different con conception of spirituality that do not necessarily involve an affiliation to a particular religious group. And they did this survey among the parents and look at the result. So in Quebec, we recognize in general that people, a majority of people are in favor of spirituality. What does it mean? We don't know yet. I'll try to show you, but uh, so far that, that's, what, uh, that's what we have. Even the Bouchard-Taylor report, a report that was um, uh, written in 2008 uh, by the philosopher Charles Taylor and Gérard Bouchard, the historian, it was uh, uh, around the big debate on reasonable accommodation. Laurie Beeman published a book recently on reasonable accommodation, and of course, the Bouchard-Taylor report was discussed, among other things. They insist in the report, they, they support the new common religious program, uh, ethics and religious program in Quebec schools. And they also say, for Quebecers, spirituality is important. So there's a certain consensus around that. I did a research during the, years, uh, the year 2000 to see a little bit more about um, about uh, what this new service was doing. And that's what I found, and I, uh, I checked since then, and it seems to be the, the, the same. So I interviewed about 70 people in all kinds of schools in Quebec. It was a report for the Ministry of Education. And that's what I found. These are just few elements, but uh, this, this is uh, around spirituality, Th this is what came out. So the first point, uh, most of the interviewees said, yeah, it's okay for the spirituality, it's okay, it's one dimension, dimension of, uh, among others. Uh, there are those who find the term rather vague. And, um, and that's what they say about spirituality. So that, you know, then we get to, what does it mean? Give meaning to events. Inspire ethical questioning among youth. Transmission of values, openness to others, important concepts. The, the Ministry of Education did a document uh, to help these uh, spiritual care animator in public schools and also private schools to organize activities. And that is that is mainly what they ask. They said, you organize activities, you know, like volunteer work or other stuff like that. And then you reflect with the, the young people, children or adolescents, and you to help them give meaning to events or give meaning to what they did. So that seems to be what they mean by spirituality. This is an example of what they're doing. So that's a problem, you know, because even if the government says, we want a, a care, a spiritual care service in each school, good example, and it could be said of the, the religious ethics and religious culture program as well, you know, it's not because it exists that it is applied. So often it looks like that. 12 schools per week, you know, to help hundreds of children and adolescents to reflect on the meaning of an event or a, an activity. Uh, what about, very quickly, I interviewed a few Anglophones and it was, it was quite funny because what they said, they said uh, principles of the uh, Anglo, uh, Anglophone, uh, because there's a, a, a big Francophone, uh, many school boards, francophone school boards in Quebec, and few anglophone school boards, uh, especially in the area of Montreal. And they said that uh, Anglo-Catholics, after uh, the secularization, they, that's what they said. It was a very important aspect of their religious life. And, and actually, we have a big, uh, 
judicial case uh, in Canada around education, and the leading actor is an Anglo-Catholic college. So see what they, they told about Anglo-Catholics. For them, it's, it's the Loyola College, Jesuit uh, Loyola College, and uh, they, they have a case, and it's going to the Supreme Court in uh, just a few months because they don't want to apply the religious culture program as it is, uh, but, but to teach it in, in a Catholic way. So what they said about the Protestant side, you can read. And this is quite funny. We were assigned a spiritual animator. We did not exist in our system. And it's a Catholic priest. <laughs> we went from not being religious at all to having a Catholic priest. Because they say that, and it maybe it shows something, the Protestant perspective was very pluralist because they would welcome children from all religions. So that's a big question. When we take into account all religions, what do we do? In the Protestant case, they say they didn't do much because it was too plural. So, and on the English side, he did multi-faith assemblies and activities. Prayers, multi-faith prayers, and so on. So you see the, the, the kind of reform that happened in the years 2000. Interestingly, in 2000, the Minister of Education has defined the new spiritual care service a bit like any spiritual care service in the health care system. I guess you, you're familiar with this also in other countries. Uh, you have a spiritual caregiver, and then if a family or a sick person wants to have a Catholic priest, a Protestant pastor, or a Buddhist, or rabbi, you know, the spiritual caregiver will give a call, and then they come, and if, if you want nothing, you, you get nothing, or just uh, spiritual uh, care. Uh, it can be general. So they, they, they try to give a pluralist service. So the Minister of Education in 2000 defined the, the spiritual care service a little bit like that. They said they could do interreligious activities, they could, they could respond to specific religious needs if some students gather together and ask for it and on and on. But this is not what happened. Just a few years after when they wrote the document to define the new uh, spiritual care service, the religious identity disappeared because they were quite prudent with it. So they, they did not introduce any religious activities in reality. So these types of interreligious experiences are not reflected in the French milieu. Maybe they were a little bit more in the English milieu as we see there because it's an interreligious service. Uh, a little bit like they do uh, in Anglophone universities with chaplaincies. But one of the administrators highlighted the lack of interest school principals demonstrate with regard to religious matters. And this is a very important point. School principals, most of them, in a lot of research in Quebec, don't like religious pluralism. So if even if spirituality is in the law, you have a class on religious culture, more or less depending on the schools. But, you know, as uh, Catherine just said to us, with that kind of spirituality that is not, to my point of view, that spiritual, religion is still the elephant in the room. It's the, the thing you don't want to touch so, and uh, the principal continued saying, when training was offered to them, the school principals, many of them offered the following response. When will the question of religion be withdrawn from schools? So, um, another study was done, and I will conclude with this and a few questions. Uh, Cher Blanc did a study as well on the new uh, spiritual care service. 
And he offered...